So I've had this maple for five years, and I've had this um, this Atmex round for five years. And looking at the edge, the round, the Atmex round, the, the edges are um, kind of like bald, so to speak, or they're smoother. And the, the edges on the maple held their edge. You know, I had some of these coins together, jingle them sometimes, and somehow the, the, the edges on the, the maple... I know for, for the American Eagles, they, 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 they kind of coated or something to get the, the, um, the American Eagle stronger. But just saying is this Atmex round, you know, the edge is, is a little bit softer. Or maybe it's just this one off. Maybe this is a one coincidence for me. But the bulk of this video, the aluminum to silver ratio. And this ratio is an example why. If you're looking at ratios, you gotta realize stuff can fundamentally change forever when it comes to metals and so forth. So, first of all, or al aluminium. I know in America we call it aluminum, other parts of the world they call it aluminium. Regardless. So, aluminum, the most abundant metal in the Earth's crust. Here in Wikipedia, it says 8% of the weight of the Earth's solid surface is made up of aluminum. That's a lot of aluminum. I mean, as far as stacking in pounds go, that's like mind-boggling. 8% of the weight of the Earth's solid surface is aluminum. I don't think we're going to be running out of aluminum unless we have some kind of like, you know, Jetsons future where we, where we have aluminum skyways to the moon and stuff. I don't know. But, but anyhow... Before modern times, they didn't have the technology to properly work this ore. So aluminum is very common today, but it used to be scarcer than gold. On Wikipedia here, it says there is a, there is a uh, like some banquet where Napoleon, for his special guests, had them use aluminum silverware, and his not so special guests had gold silverware because the aluminum was more like you know, scarce and so forth. And of course, nowadays, uh, we, we all know that, you know, if you go to a banquet and they give you aluminum silverware, you're probably not at the top of the, t of, of, of the banquet, right? You're probably not at the head of the banquet if they're giving you aluminum silverware today. So the ratio, right? So in Wikipedia, it says in 1884, silver and aluminum had the same price. The ratio of silver to aluminum in 1884 was one to one. And that's Back when silver was used in coinage and was was monetized, it was it was it was the, the, the becoming unmonetized in the U.S. But it was still there's a, still a silver standard in China. So you had a, a one to one ratio of silver to aluminum back then. And now I I took a spreadsheet open and I see that going to Kitco, aluminum is ninety one cents per pound. Silver is nineteen point four dollars per troy ounce. It's the math. We've got about a three hundred to one ratio which aluminum and silver 300 win a ratio so in 1884 one to one and now it's 300 to one and historically speaking if, if, if you want to look only at charts and you didn't want to look at like fundamentals and back then in the 1800s you were some metals trader right and you didn't want to hear about any kind of news it was all charts you say wow my aluminum chart goes back hundreds of years and my silver chart goes back hundreds of years. And wow, this aluminum to silver ratio keeps widening. Well, I, I'm going to keep doubling down because after all, it's going to revert to the mean. No, there's new technology that makes aluminum so common that if, if I had held aluminum like in 1884 and there was this technology coming out that would make aluminum so, so, so common, I would sell at any price. I mean, because if something got a one-to-one -one ratio and it's going to reach a 300-to-one ratio, right, I'd be selling at a one-to-one, ten-to-one, hundred-one ratio. I'd be dumping the aluminum um, w without regard for, for, for any kind of charts. But someone who is stuck in the charts would say, oh, I'm going to keep buying aluminum because, I mean, it's going to revert to the mean. Well, the, the, that, that's the, 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 the market has changed so much. All the previous charts thrown out. That's kind of a warning for people who want to blindly look at the charts. You have to look at the real world also. Another thing of the charts is I've heard a lot about the, 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 the Dow to gold ratio. And in the past, it has been one to one, I think twice. 
So you have two data points. I remember like in 2008, in that area, people were saying the Dow to gold ratio will be one to one again. Most likely, yes. But with two data points, to make a strong statement in the short term, I think it takes a little bit more than having two data points. I think it's going to happen, but I think call. I think in 2008, calling for a one-to-one -one ratio, in the next few years back then, that was that was reaching. That was too much anecdotal evidence. That was looking at two data points. And in, in, in the future, we'll have a third data point. But because we only have two data points, I'm not sure I can really call that third data point. So thanks for watching and this aluminium stuff is fascinating.